Today we are going to be talking about 3D fluids in Maya and how to use it. So this will be an introductory level video where we will see how to set you up with the first MOOC simulation and what 3D container is. So I'm going to switch to FX menu and let's open up fluids and open this up. Alright. So fluid is a basically fluid simulation system inside of Maya that helps you create smoke, fire, pyro simulation, below V smoke and so on. So we'll see how we can create it. So I'm gonna click on the 3D container now and this will open up something like this. Let's close this. Let's bring this up. Alright, so this is our container and here you'll notice that we get two things. I'm gonna turn off the grid. Here you'll notice that we get two things. The first is the emitter which is in the center which is going to be emitting our smoke or you can say particles and the second thing that we have is the container. The container will be holding all the simulation. Every simulation is going to be happening inside of this container. Right. If you go to your outliner, you'll also notice that you get fluid. And if you open this up, you have that emitter as well. So you can select it from the outliner as well. So let's close this up. All right, so I'm going to select my container here. And the first thing uh, you'll notice is that we get something called as the base resolution, which is the most important aspect of your whole 3D container. Because this is the overall, overall quality of your smoke simulation. So right now it has been set to 10. Um, in a way you can say it is pretty low res. So what uh, base resolution is, is uh, basically how much voxels you have in your container. For example, right now here at the bottom you'll see we have a lot of square, squares. And if I increase this, you'll notice that the squares are kind of multiplying and increasing in numbers. And if I decrease this, they're decreasing in numbers. So the more amount of voxels you have, the more amount of higher detail you are going to get. So what is a voxel? A voxel is basically an invisible cube that holds a property of something called as temperature, density, fuel, burn, velocity and so on. So imagine as if this is your invisible cube and this is going to hold all those properties that you give to your 3D simulation for example density, temperature and the amount of small boxes you have the more amount of resolution, good resolution you are going to get. So the key here is having smaller voxels just so we can get much more sharper uh, simulation. So if I select this just don't overdo this too much because it is kind of pretty heavy. Alright so the next thing that we have is the boundary. If I play this, uh, I'm gonna hit 5 on my keyboard. If I play this you'll notice that we have smoke emitting. And as one thing you'll notice that the smoke is kind of getting trapped inside of the box. It's not fading away or even passing. So to fix that you can simply go to the boundary Y and here you can select none and that will just fix the problem. Now it's totally up to you if you want to trap the smoke inside or not. And there you go. So I'm gonna do the opposite. I want the smoke to be trapped inside. The same goes for all the axes X and Z. If you don't want the smoke to be trapped inside of the smoke, you can simply set it to none. Alright, so the next thing that we have is a content method and this will just allow what properties you want in your simulation. Right now what we have is the density and the velocity. We have no temperature and no fuel and we don't have to get into it. Uh, it will be covered in the future videos. This will be just so we can cover our first simulation. So uh, the thing about voxel, if I go to display and turn the boundary to full, this is the voxel that I was talking about and this will just help you visualize like for example if I have lower number. So these are the voxels. So here you'll notice that we have pretty high voxels that means we are not going to be getting much higher detail. It will be pretty hard to see. It will be pretty blurry. So I'm going to keep this to 30. And I think that will be a reasonable amount of number. And I'm going to switch this back to bottom. All right. So the main thing that we have to understand to control our smoke is all those properties. I'm going to select my emitter first and uh, bring this down to right about here, just so we have more space to play around with. Uh, yeah. Alright, so the main key to controlling your simulation is hitting in the content details and here you will find everything that you need to control your smoke simulation. If you go to the density, you will notice that we get a density scale which is the overall density of your smoke, how thick you want your smoke to be. 
If I increase this to 2, you'll notice that my smoke is kind of getting thicker. And if I play this again, now we have much thicker smoke. There you go. Alright, so the next thing that we get is the buoyancy. And buoyancy is basically a kind of a pressure that is applied on your smoke, how fast you want the smoke to be emitted, uh, how much pressure you want in your smoke to be pushed away. So if I play this now, this is the one value, but if I increase this to something like 5 and play this again, you'll notice a drastic difference. So how fast the smoke is kind of getting emitted. So I'm going to keep it to 1. And the next thing that we get is the dissipation and this is how fast you want the smoke to be ended uh, or you can say how fast you want the particles to die. Uh, right now the value is 0 that means the uh, particles or the smoke are going to live forever. That means they are not going to die anytime soon. So if I increase this and increase, 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 there you go. So the smoke is kind of ending right about here. I'm going to increase the value to maybe 5 and the smoke is kind of dying right about here. So this is how you can control your smoke, how far you want the smoke to be uh, going or how far you want the smoke to be emitted. You can control it by dissipation. So these are uh, three principle of um, three key, key points to controlling your smoke by controlling the density, buoyancy and dissipation. Right, I'm going to add some noise into my smoke, not too much, just a point to value. Uh, yeah, there you go and reduce the dissipation to maybe like 0.2. The noise just gives us a little bit of variation. Don't overdo this too much. If you do, you'll have this kind of smoke, which is not exactly that good looking. All right, there you go. And uh, then uh, the other thing to keep in mind is the velocity. And uh, right now what you'll see in our smoke, it's uh, pretty linear, right? We don't get much variation. So to add some, swirl into it we are going to control it by the velocity so let's add some swirl i'm going to hit the value of 4 and let's see and now you'll notice that we are getting some swirly patterns if it's not too much you can increase the value and there you go so you have much more swirly patterns now right all right so the next thing that we have to add is the turbulence because a fire always has turbulence if you see any bonfire, uh, you'll notice there's always going to be some kind of turbulence. So I'm going to add a value of maybe 2. Alright, so now you can see the turbulence going on here. It looks very nice. I'm going to lower the value to May 0.1. Right? Uh, so there's no use of temperature right now since we have kept it off to 0, uh, which we don't have to get into. It will be covered in the future videos, but this will be enough to get you started with your first smoke simulation. The key point here is controlling the density, buoyancy and dissipation and playing more around with velocity and some turbulence. Alright, so the next thing that we are going to get into is a little bit of lighting and shading. I'm going to increase some base resolution here to maybe like 40. Yeah, there you go. So this looks pretty good. And let's quickly get into the lighting here. Now one thing interesting about 3D container is that you get a self shadow option. That means you don't have to create an extra light just to get that shadow look in your smoke. And you can control the shadow opacity. I usually keep it to 0.7. And that way this is the difference. So you are getting that nice shadow for your smoke simulation. You don't have to take any extra light to get that. And then we'll get into the shading. So right now one thing you'll notice is that uh, we already get a fire shader inbuilt inside of Maya. And uh, but we still can't see it and the reason is because the incandescent input has been set to temperature. Right now what we are working on is the density channel. So if I switch it back to the density you'll see some fire shader going on. But we still see the white smoke. Now to change that you can go to the color. And in the color you can change the color to something like maybe black and there you go so now you'll notice that our smoke has kind of disappeared so we can control our transparency from here how much you want it and then play around with the color and let's yeah there you go and this is what we get and if I play this yeah something like this now one more thing to keep in mind 
since we have two things here, the first is the emitter, this guy, and the second is the fluid shape which holds our overall simulation. So you can select your emitter, and in the emitter you get uh, different options like the density voxel per second, heat fuel and so on so instead of adding more density from here we can lower this to 1 instead of 0.5 and uh, since we have set it to 2 I think 1 should be enough and we can add more density that means more density will be applied in our simulation from our emitter so I can increase the value to 2 that way we will get more density here as you can see so you can use that as well and then there's a lot of different options you can create some volume if you want you can add some emission and so on uh, which we'll see in near future but yeah so now you are getting amazing look like this uh, in case you want to change the color of your overall smoke you can simply go into the shading and here instead of uh, having the density you can change to constant and that way you can change uh, to a constant color here you'll have yellow instead you can keep anything that you want so maybe something like this uh, totally up to you you can have a constant color and so on uh, there are a lot of different things uh, that you can play now you also have a center gradient you can use that as well totally up to you so i'm going to keep it to density i think that's fine all right so the smoke looks pretty amazing now and uh, i think uh, we still have a lot of turbulence in our smoke so i'm going to lower that down i'm going to go into the content details turbulence and maybe add a value of 0 0.05 sorry 0 0.05 there you go and uh, in the buoyancy I'm going to increase some buoyancy to be 1.5 just so we have more pressure applied in our smoke yeah and there you go so right now one thing is happening that is our smoke is kind of getting trapped and I don't want it to pass away as well I want the whole simulation to be seen so what I can do is I can simply go into the auto resize and I'm going to check on auto resize now what this is going to do is it's going to manage or adjust the bounding box according to our smoke so if i play this now again here you'll notice that the smoke simulation or the bounding box is adjusting itself according to the simulation so i'm going to lower the overall sorry i'm going to lower the overall frames to 150 all right so let's close this up uh, the one thing that uh, we are going to do at last is increase the base resolution to somewhere about 100 and uh, now we are going to catch the whole simulation just so it's easier for us to play back so i'm going to select my bounding box go to end catch create new catch and here you'll find my fluids you can also go to the options and you can change the path of your catch any way you like so i'm going to go in catch create new catch and my fluid i'm going to replace this because i already have an existing catch here all right so our catch has been done and uh, yeah, it looks pretty nice. Yeah, so if you want, you can also increase some, um, yeah, something like this. Yeah, and you can simply go here and play blast this. Alright, so that's it for this one. Uh, this is a pretty easy simulation, pretty basic simulation. You are getting nice pyro smoke simulation going on here. So this was pretty easy to do. I hope you understood everything there is and it was helpful in some ways. So experiment with this. Um, to get you set up with this, all you need to play around with is the density, some velocity and turbulence and for the shading, make sure you are in the density channel and play more around with the lighting things. You can change the overall opacity of this, some diffusion and some light brightness and so on. So play around with this and uh, show me what you come up with. And that's it for this one and I'll see you in the next video.